This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of powerful tips and techniques for creating a slideshow. Let's go ahead and import our photos and music. We can go to the top left and click on this icon and in here we can locate the folder that contains all of the images we wanna use in our project. After that, I'll just push import selected. From there, we can go ahead and just select all of our photos by clicking and dragging or you can push command A. After that, I'm just gonna right click and select new project. From there, I'll just call it whatever I would like then I'm going to go ahead and set this to 1080p HD with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to recommend that you set your frame rate to something like 30 frames per second. After that, we can push OK. Now that we've added in our photos, you'll notice that if I select this, we can see right here that each of these are set to 10 seconds in duration. We have several different ways to fix that. I want each of these clips to go along with the music. So I've imported some music, adding that to my timeline, we can go ahead and find the portion that we want to actually play out in our video somewhere in here. Now there is a really great technique for figuring out exactly how long each of these photos should be. I'm going to go ahead and push play and along with the B, I'm going to push the M key, which will add a marker. Now I'm going to recommend that you add down five markers and this is going to give you a good idea of when the next measure of music is going to carry out. From there, I'm going to click on this down arrow next to the arrow and select my range selection tool, which can also be achieved with R. Locating the first marker, click and drag all the way to the last fifth marker and you'll see how long that is in duration right here on our timeline. Now I was barely off with the markers, but we can see that it takes about four seconds. With that information in mind, go ahead and select all of your photos, then push Control D, which will allow us to change the duration. From there, I'm gonna push four and then zero, zero. What that stands for is four seconds and zero frames. If we wanna extend this out even longer, we could continue to add in more zeros, or if we wanna shorten it down because we added too many zeros, you can just push backspace and that will get rid of those. Once we have that set to four zero zero, I'll go ahead and push enter, and you'll notice that each of these photos has been shortened down to four seconds. So now our music will line up perfectly with our slideshow. Now we want all of these photos to have a nice slow zoom animation or pan animation on them. So to achieve that, go ahead and click and drag over all of your photos, then come to the right side and locate your cropping options. If they aren't expanded, go ahead and click on show. From there, change the type from trim over to Ken Burns. This is going to automatically apply nice slow zooms onto each of these photos and they will be randomized. So if I move my mouse through, you can see how each of these has been nicely animated. Now, if we're not happy with a particular zoom, we can go ahead and select that particular photo. Then we can click on this down arrow and locate the crop tool. You can also achieve that with shift C. In here, you'll see that there is a green box and a red box. The green box is where the animation starts. The red box is where the animation ends. If you want to flip that, you can go to the top left and click on this icon, which will flop those two boxes. So now the green point is starting at the top where the red point is coming to the end. You can also click and drag on these corners to expand them and adjust how much of a zoom they have. So I'll just go ahead and expand these out a bit. Then I'll go to the top right and push done. It's important that you push done because sometimes in Final Cut Pro, there is a weird bug where there will be just a black screen wherever you've added this Ken Burns tool to. So by pushing done, it seems to fix that issue. Once all of the photos have had their animations applied, we can select them all, then push command and T, which will apply the default transition. The default transition will be the cross dissolve. So you'll see how we have these nice slow fades between each photo. If you wanted to apply a different transition onto all of these, what you could do is go over to your transitions menu, locate the transition that you want, say for example, this color panels, right click and then select make default. Once you've done that, you can select all of your photos, push command T, and now every single one of these photos is going to have that particular transition on it. Final Cut Pro has a really powerful library of really nice looking transitions for slideshows. Go ahead and locate the stylized category here on the left hand side and you'll see all of these different stylized transitions. What's really cool 
is we could find this photo album and I'll just go ahead and click and drag this on top of one of the transitions we've already added then release and that will swap out that transition. I can go ahead and zoom in. We can click and drag to extend the duration of the transition. But then if I select that transition, you'll notice these different numbers on the sides. If I park my playhead in the middle, you'll see that there's these various different photos here inside of this photo album. What we can do is zoom out and I'll click and drag on one of these numbers to change the photo that shows here in the video. And we can do the same thing with number one. So now it's going to have this nice transition, but we can also adjust which photos are shown here on the edges. Maybe some of your photos are going to have these black edges. So once you've gone through and created your entire slideshow, what I recommend is you select all of your photos once more, right click and then select new compound clip. We can go ahead and just leave that as it is and that will create this nice little compound clip which can be duplicated. Push option, click and drag and drop that in underneath the primary clip. Then with this lower clip selected, we can go to our effects browser and look up something like the Gaussian blur. I'll go ahead and apply that and we'll go ahead and take a look at the moment that has the black edges. What I can do is scale up this photo really massively and you'll see how that adds this nice little blur effect to the backdrop. But I'm somebody who really likes adding in texture. So let's go ahead and jump on over into our titles and generators. Selecting the generators, we can look up the paper generator. I'll click and drag that down onto my timeline. Then we can go ahead and extend that out over the duration of our project. Now we can see there's this nice little paper backdrop behind this photo. Let's change the blend mode from normal over to overlay. And you'll see how there is now this paper texture applying onto the video that's being played in the background. Backdrop. So this can be a great way to make your videos feel like a scrapbook by adding in these different textures. Something else you could do is scale up that texture, go to the very first frame, we'll add a keyframe to the rotation, then go to the very last frame and set this to something like 20 degrees. So now this should have a really nice slow rotation over the duration of our video. I'll also select that primary compound clip and scale it down a bit. Then we could apply something like a drop shadow. We can adjust where that drop shadow takes place. And now if I push play, we should have a great little slideshow. Now what's really great about this method is let's say later on you've decided to swap out where photos are. What you can do is go to the top left hand side of the compound clip and double click. That will expand out the compound clip. Now we can add in even more photos and those changes will be applied to that underlying compound clip that we set up a little bit later. So now your background is always going to match your foreground, which is going to look really great. Now, if you want to continue to improve your abilities in Final Cut Pro, I strongly recommend that you check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an incredible platform that allows you to gain access to thousands of courses on pretty much anything you could possibly think of. Whether that's video editing, running a business, or even building your charisma, Skillshare has you covered. I personally have been loving using Skillshare to level up my thumbnail game. I've been watching Affinity Revolution's insane six hour course called Affinity Photo Beyond the Basics and it has absolutely transformed the way I make my thumbnails today. If you are one of the first 1000 people to sign up using my links down below, you are going to get access to Skillshare's entire library completely for free for your first month. Don't miss this incredible opportunity to level up your skills as a creator for free and sign up today.